Good morning everyone. My name is Taryn and you are watching my channel, Nicole Flower House. This channel is all about my cut flower garden and I'm located in zone 7B. I grow tons of cut flowers and I don't use any pesticides or fungicides or any kind of chemical application at all. So I'm trying to figure out how to grow everything naturally and still get beautiful flowers. Right now the garden is very wild and I'm not making any efforts to tame it or pretty it up. I'm just kind of letting it go. And that's not the best approach, but it got away from me. And so I'm just trying to take this in stride and learn from it and do things a little differently next year. I have started some cleanup for fall planting, but here we are starting out this garden tour in my zinnia patch. It's doing pretty good. I would like it to be more abundant, so I'm not sure if I should plant things closer together or just pinch them more heavily. Next up, I have some gumfrina in this patch. The white ones aren't quite ready to harvest, but the carmine and the lavender colored ones are ready, so I will be cutting those later on. This video is gonna start out with kind of a garden tour. I'm not gonna tour the whole garden because it's a mess, but I will show you what's different from the last tours and also what I plan on cutting because toward the middle of the video, I will be harvesting several buckets of flowers out of here. Even though it's very wild and crazy, there are still plenty of usable stems in here. And at the end of the video, I will arrange everything I cut into some hand-tied bouquets. I've changed up my arranging strategy a little bit. These are going to be arrangements in mason jars, but I'm going to arrange them as if they were bouquets and then just cut the stems and place them in the jars. That's a little different than I used to do, but it's much quicker and I enjoy the process a lot more. There's a lot more freedom and you can change things around a lot easier. So I will be showing you how I do that. This right here is a new zinnia patch. I planted this probably two to three weeks ago and it's looking really good. You can see right here where I've pinched these zinnias and so they are branching right where I cut them. So that should give me more stems as well. I did add the composted horse manure to this bed before putting the mulch on top, so hopefully these plants are nice and fed. I've noticed that a lot of my soil is very tired, so this off season I will be sure to be adding amendments to the soil like the horse manure and maybe some other things like coca loco, compost tea, or some things like that. This bed right here, I've cleared almost everything out of it. There was a lot of weeds and potatoes in here. That is a volunteer vine called Love in a Puff. These are a few pumpkin vines that I had survive. I had to plant a whole new round because of vine borers and most of my new sprouts were also taken out by vine borers. But I read online about how you can bury the stems to protect the plants and allow them to form new root systems throughout the vine. So these two that did survive, I have buried the stems. They are looking good so far. When the vines get longer, I will bury different parts of the stems so that they will grow root systems and maybe survive. Here is my dahlia patch. I really need to do a lot of work on it, but I think I've gotten a good handle on what I want to do. Here I've added some twine. This is just a plastic twine um, to do the corralling method in addition to the Hortanova netting. I noticed before when I was corralling the dahlias with jute twine, which is a natural fiber, when it got wet, it would stretch, so it didn't really help the dahlias stay in place. 
So I switched to this type and it looks like it's working really well. I really want to get in here and prune these a little bit more, but they're looking much better than the other beds you can see for comparison. So I have some more work to do on this one and also I'm going to be adding the horse manure and some more mulch to help feed these plants. The heat of the summer is not really where dahlias shine, so even though these aren't looking their best, I'm not giving up on them and they should put on a lot of buds toward the fall when the weather starts to cool off. So as long as I can keep these pretty happy, I'm sure they will put on a new flush for me. Now you can see the rest of these really need tied up very badly. They're falling into the pathways. And once I get the pathways cleared of dahlias, I can take care of the weed problem and the grass problem that's happening in the pathways. Previously, I was trying to keep these pathways mulched with either mulch or wood chips, and that's just not gonna happen. It's very labor intensive and I just can't keep enough material. So here is me trying to take care of this. I found this little itty bitty lawnmower. It's battery powered and it's only, I think like 13 inches wide. So it'll fit between these garden beds. That's why I got it because it's very narrow in here. And I'm just going to let the grass grow and keep it mowed in between. Despite all of this, there are still some beautiful blooms happening in here. They are mixed throughout, so I'm happy to see those. But you can see there's also a lot of water damage. We've been getting tons and tons of rain. It's been raining nearly every day. Not that much, maybe for like 30 minutes a day, but it's just enough to keep the foliage wet and unable to dry out. So I need to get these tied up, deadheaded, pruned back, and cleaned up, all that fun stuff. And these dahlias should recover and do just fine. Moving on to these beds over here, another thing I'm going to do next season is definitely have landscape fabric. The grass has overtaken these beds and so I'm going to be using landscape fabric to give myself a little break with the weeding because obviously I can't keep up with it and it's just going crazy with all this rain. But despite that, my zinnia patch back here is looking really good. There's plenty of stems that I'm going to be cutting out of here for my two arrangements that I'll be making at the end of the video. This right here, I really wish I had gotten a picture or a video of this rose before all the blooms faded, but there were so many blooms on that branch. It almost looked like a rose tree. It was pretty cool, but they have all faded. I have some eggplant down in there that needs harvested. The rudbeckia needs cut all the way back because it just needs a refresh, so I'll be doing that. Those are those yellow flowers and red flowers you see right here. The rudbeckia variety is called Sahara, the one on the right. The one on the left is just a traditional color. I can't remember the exact variety. Over here next to this rose, which is Desdemona, I have a huge patch of a flower called Jewels of Opar. I think this is beyond what you'd normally wanna cut it at, but it's just kind of dried into these really cool pods. So I'm definitely gonna harvest a ton of these for my arrangements. They add such a nice light airy texture and element to the bouquets. 
so I love it and I love the color as well. Behind here is more Celosia. It is ready to be cut. I believe that one is called Flamingo Feather. This is my Strawberry Hill Rose. She needs a lot of work as well, but she's still putting on blooms and looks really great. Underneath Strawberry Hill, I have some asters growing. This is the first year that I have asters growing and I really, really love them and I want to do a lot more. I was surprised to find these because they hadn't really been doing much. The dead plants in between here are status. I did not get those cut back in time. I'm not sure if I cut those, if they'll recover or not, but I can always try. And then those brown dried up pods are from Scabiosa or Pincushion Flower. Again, more victims of neglect, but I've just been balancing work and other family commitments. So sometimes you just can't get to everything in the garden. My eucalyptus here is doing really well. That is the green material to the right. And now let's start the harvesting. I've noticed when I make bouquets that I harvest about three quarters of a bucket per bouquet. I harvest, I think three full buckets throughout this video and I ended up using pretty much two of them with some leftover. So I did have leftover stuff that I didn't use. You'll see that toward the end, but it's good for me to kind of figure out a system of how many flowers I need to cut and how many bouquets I should be able to get out of that. Prior to this time, I was just cutting as much as I could and trying to divide the ingredients evenly between how many bouquets I needed and just hoped that I have enough. But now I kind of know about how many flowers I need per bouquet. And my bouquets are really full. I love having a ton of green and filler in my bouquets. It may seem weird that the filler is one of my favorite parts, but I think that's what really makes a bouquet look more professional and it looks like it has more value. The green is just one of my favorite parts. And the filler also adds different textures and elements to the bouquet and a lot of interest. And you have a nice balanced bouquet at the end of it. So first I'm starting with my zinnias here. I did deadhead some and toss some aside that were already spent and too old to use. And then I cut the ones that I can put in the bouquets.
The next ingredient I'm cutting here is celosia. I have multiple types here. I think they're called fans, and some of the bigger ones are called brains, I believe. I've never grown anything other than the spikes, so I'm really liking these, and I've noticed that the longer you leave them on the plant, the bigger they get. I'm really excited to use these in bouquets. I know it can be kind of intimidating to have such a strong element in your bouquet. I like to put something like this right in the center and then build off of that. So I would only put like one or two of these kind of bunched together in the center as a focal point and then build my supporting flowers and fillers around them.
Next up, I'm harvesting basil. I love to add things that smell nice to the bouquets. Everyone seems to notice when the bouquets smell nice, so that's always a nice added touch. This basil is pretty mature. This would never be good for eating, but I've noticed basil tends to flop if you don't hydrate it well. But another thing is that this basil is so mature that the plants are getting kind of woody. So this hardly ever flops in the vase when I cut it this far along. but it still smells nice. It adds a great texture and color to the bouquets and the flower spikes are still interesting. They don't have all the petals on them, but this basil definitely will not flop just because it's so, the plant is old. I'm not sure if anyone else out there has noticed or done the same thing, but it really makes it a lot easier. If you cut basil really young, it does have a tendency to flop, and it usually recovers after rehydration, but sometimes it doesn't, so it just depends. But I find that this makes it a little simpler, and it is a little bit of a different texture and look than if you were to harvest the basil younger, but I still like using this in bouquets. Now when you have a lot of older leaves and stuff like this, you have to do a lot more cleaning up of the stems. There's more bug damage and water damage on it, but it's still usable and looks and smells great. The next ingredient I'm taking here is Gumfrina. It's one of my favorites. It is kind of tedious and time consuming to harvest, but I think it's so whimsical and fun that I don't mind. So I'm harvesting plenty of gum frina for my bouquets. These are the asters that we saw in the garden just a while ago. 
and after that I also harvested some jewels of opar and also eucalyptus. I'm really enjoying the fact that my eucalyptus has perennialized. A lot of growers grow this as annuals, but it's so slow growing that if you do that, normally you don't get a good harvest until the fall. And I can get a decent eucalyptus harvest pretty much any time now. I'm really gonna baby it and put frost cloth over it over the winter. And each season I do start new seedlings and just sprinkle them throughout my landscape and gardens to ensure that I have some in case my eucalyptus doesn't winter over for some reason. But I really love that I get to use this all the time. Next up, I'm harvesting some Cosmos. These have completely fallen over. The Hortanova netting was not tall enough at all the way I had it on these plants to support them. And they were also reaching pretty heavily because they've been shaded by that tree that's above them. So I just went and harshly cut these back since they were falling into the pathways. There's still some blooms on them and also it's a good filler. I didn't end up needing this for the bouquets that I made, but I'm glad that I cut it and I'll use it for something to decorate my house with. These are the zinnias that came from the patch that was out in the back of the garden, not the ones next to the rain barrels. And also there were some more cosmos back there. I really like those. Those are double click cranberry cosmos. They're very pretty. Okay, now that I have all the flowers harvested and inside, I'll let them hydrate for a few hours. Normally I like to let them sit overnight, but today I only have about six hours to let them sit. When I'm arranging, I like to have an empty bucket to throw scraps into that I can dump into my compost later on. It just makes cleanup a little bit easier for me. And also I try to clean the stems as much as I can out in the garden so I don't have as much to do when I come inside. But you'll notice as I harvested, I got a little lazier as time went on. I was trying to get done quicker so that the flowers could hydrate longer. So some of these stems have more cleanup needed than others. You will notice that as I go through them. I like to lay my stems out and group them together and have them all cleaned up. I don't like picking them up out of buckets because sometimes they get tangled up. And if you have the flowers well hydrated, leaving them out on the table like this for 45 minutes or an hour shouldn't hurt them and they should recover fine once you get them back into water. If you don't hydrate your blooms before you do this, they will wilt and look pretty bad. So make sure your flowers are nice and hydrated if you're gonna leave them out of the buckets like this. I just find the bouquets come together more easily. I have more fun when I arrange this way and I'm not having to fight 
tangled stems or try to pull leaves off with just one hand or anything like that. And then something I didn't do this time that I wish I had done was put them in the order that I thought I was going to use them. That makes it a little quicker and easier as well. But I just kind of laid all my ingredients out this time and then just walked around and picked up what I thought I wanted, even though they weren't in order.
both of my bouquets made. They're in the jars. I will add ribbons and my business card to these and they'll be all finished up. That is all for today's video. I hope you had fun and enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And the best way you can support me and my channel is to subscribe and share it with your flower-loving friends. I'll see you next time. Bye.